The music in Exorcist to the Heretic is beautiful. It's great to have Linda Blair back as Reagan, and it's kind of cool to have Richard Burton there as Father Philip Lamont. Unfortunately, that's where my praise for this film stops. I always go into sequels with open minds. I know most sequels are never as good as the original film, but quite often they can be surprising. They might have a slightly different angle or a slightly different feel that works well for that film. Exorcist 2, and I will probably call it The Exorcist 2 at some point. I don't know why it annoys me so much that it's not called The Exorcist 2, but it really does. Um, this one definitely feels very different to The Exorcist, and that's not a good thing. This takes place uh, so many years after the first film, and Reagan is now much older. She's a teenager, and they're exploring a little bit of what happened. And, well, I don't want to say too much more about what happens, because I don't want to spoil anything in case you do decide to watch it. But... Some things are being dug up and they try to take a different angle with it and try to make it more, I don't I feel like they tried to make it deeper and give it a, a deeper backstory for, for this demon and its origins and where these things came to be. And I just felt like they really spoiled it. That's not to say you can't give a deeper backstory or origin or source of demon, uh, demonic activity if it works well. But this one is so boring. It is the most dull narrative. And unfortunately, Reagan wasn't even very interesting in it. She spends most of the film either with a light strapped to her head or looking into a light. And it started off really well. I thought this is going to be quite atmospheric. It's going to be really fascinating. And the first kind of 10 minutes or so, I was intrigued. And it seemed like it would have a good feel, like it would be an interesting story. And then by about 20, maybe 25 minutes in, I realised that that wasn't the case. And it is the most non-scary horror film I have ever seen. I'm trying to think, there wasn't one bit that scared me. There was one moment uh, involving vehicles. I won't explain it in any detail, but it involves vehicles. And they basically turned the lights down and turned the sound up. So we couldn't clearly see what was happening. Things were moving really quickly and the sound was so loud. But it wasn't scary. There was nothing scary about it. It was just uncomfortable. It's the kind of sound, obviously I'm watching this on a tiny laptop screen, but it's the kind of sound that actually makes you feel sick to your stomach when you're in a cinema. Because cinemas are overly loud in general. It's the kind of sound that would have been horrible. But again, not scary, just uncomfortable. There is nothing in this. That is scary at all. The narrative is terrible. But the music is gorgeous. I have to say, I really love the music in this. And even though Reagan was so boring in this one, I did, I, I'm pleased she was in the sequel. Had it not been Reagan, had it been, you know, say somebody else in the same position as her and a, a very similar story, I would have liked it even less. Because I do like Reagan as a character and I like to see where she went after the first film. I appreciate that. So credit where it's due, they made the right decision to bring Reagan into it, but they made the wrong decision with the story, the wrong decision with what they attempted to make scary, but their version of scary is just slightly dimmer lights and quite a lot louder sounds, but that's not scary, that's just uncomfortable and a bit annoying, and I, I, I can't, there's nothing else, there's no other praise I have for this, I thought it was diabolical. I always go into sequels with an open mind because there are films where I prefer the sequels or the sequels have a, you know, they give a different experience. And fair enough, Exorcist 2 is a very different experience. But I just don't understand how you can get the first film so right, so very perfectly right. I mean, it's not perfect, but all things considered, it's pretty incredible, particularly for the time and the things that they achieved and the makeup effects and indeed the performance from Linda Blair and then you have this film with a boring so boring narrative the only thing that saved the narrative was the fact that Reagan was at the heart of it so I was at least slightly intrigued with what was happening with her character and then of course we have some other good cast members and the performances were all very good and the music was really beautiful um, not the sound effects the sound effects were either fine or just irritatingly loud, but the music was very good. Would I recommend it? 
Only if you loved The Exorcist and are keen to see what happens with Reagan next. I mean, to be fair, it's not the most fascinating thing that's happened with Reagan, but I just like, there's something comforting knowing that her life didn't end kind of, you know, her story didn't end with the first film. We can follow her a little bit later, and I like that. But beyond that, I wouldn't recommend it. I am going to watch the next one. And I plan to watch them all, because, well, I've started, so I might as well finish. But if the next one is as bad, I might not rush to watch the fourth one. But right now, I'm still going to go forward with an open mind. I will always judge a film with a with a you know with a fresh mind with as fresh a perspective as I can trying to not base my opinions on the predecessors and maybe the third film will, will be a winner I'm not expecting anything to be up to the brilliant quality um of the original maybe the later ones when you know technology has advanced they might be scarier if they utilize things the right way but if they're just going to turn the lights down and turn the sound up I'm not going to get scared, I'm just going to get annoyed, and unfortunately, that's basically all not The Exorcist 2 has to offer. Tremendously disappointed.